There were no special problems, but when you design a game, of course, everything depends on how it's received by the intended players. So anybody with any sense, and I have to say a lot of people in this trade don't have any sense, makes a number of prototypes and test them out. Yeah. So a game could, could come totally unstuck when you find that nobody really wants to play it or they can't understand it or they don't like it enough. So well, this was never so with Connect. They always liked to play it, but there were situations where they it came to an impasse, and we had to do that to work out what you do when you come to an apparent impasse. So that was a typical sort of situation. I um, there have been other games that we've done which um, right at the beginning, as soon as we made a single prototype and tested it out. It was a no-go, so we just left it. Well, I'll tell you what risk you take. If you design something in your time, in your studio time, which is expensive, and you haven't been commissioned to do it, which we hadn't in the case of any of the games or toys we designed, we did them off our own initiative. Although you have a close connection, as I did with Galt, very close, I was their consultant, graphic designer, when we, pre when we presented the games, we just said, you know, what do you think of this? That's risky. They may think nothing. They may think, hmm, don't like it. In fact, they took more or less everything we offered. One of the reasons for this was that we tried them out mm. beforehand. We knew they would work. But uh, that's a risky thing. Uh, we have done since working with Gortz, with other people, occasionally we've produced ideas for books and so on, which just fell flat. That's the nature of the of that, that way of doing designs. No, no. Sometimes you are working in a, for a client, you've been working for them for some time, and you're familiar with one another, and so what you do is something that you are pretty sure it's going to be okay. So you don't always take a risk. No, a lot of graphic design is following a pattern, and so it should be. If, if every hour of every day working in a studio you take a risk, you go bonkers. Yeah. You need something steady. Well, I listed that the, those things which I thought were not terribly valuable off the cuff. And some of the things I listed were valuable. <laughs> they're not all, they're not all worthless things. What I was trying to say, I suppose, was about the inordinate amount of money that is spent on products which have no particular character, and the inordinate amount of money has to be spent because they have no particular character. Think, for example, of um, oh washing up liquid or whatever, they're all the bloody same, you know, I mean, you can't tell one from the other. If you put them out to test, like powders, you know, no one would know the difference. So you have to go into a massive advertising to try and pretend that they're different. That was what I was banging on about. I think it came out a little bit uh, crude, because I've written it in a hurry. And it looked as though I was condemning all sorts of things, which I wasn't really. I was talking about priorities. I was talking about how we manipulate our wealth. And our wealth is the product of our work. It's not the product of some fat ass sitting on his own counting his money. That's He's doing fuck all, you know, just sitting there counting his money. The wealth is what we do. We make wealth. And I was... I haven't got a, a recipe for becoming a graphic designer. There's no point in me giving it to you. I really don't know. Uh, I would say to everyone studying, please acquire as many skills as you can. Not because those skills will always be useful, because some of them will be obsolete almost uh, by the time you emerge into the biz. But because learning skills is the way by which we operate.
you you are using a skill now, photographing me, asking questions. That's a skill skill you're beginning to acquire, and I hope you go on acquiring it. Um, th so that certainly we do, but uh, no, I don't have an absolute recipe. Yes, about, about failures, um, I've been incredibly lucky, and I don't attribute whatever we've been the success we've had since 1964 to uh, directly to any skills. I attribute a lot of it to sheer damn luck. <laughs> I've been hugely lucky. So I'm not a very good guy to advise you about how to overcome uh, bad moments or failures or whatnot because the failures that there have been have been very, very few and not not really worth thinking about. So, I, so I'm not a very good uh, help for ourselves. Um, yes, I do. I think that it's the most uh, inspiring and uh, invigorating business to be doing. And um, I have loved doing it, and I think that other people should and can feel the same love and enjoyment. I have to say that what I've done though isn't just been graphic design. I spent a lot of time teaching and I spent a lot of time writing and most recently I spent a lot of time taking photographs and currently my my major concern is photography uh, but, but I have to say I don't separate graphic design from photography it's alongside it and it interpenetrates when I take photographs it's like doing a piece of graphic design that's so I don't actually make that much difference between the two, you know? No, I'm quite happy that some people can say to themselves, I have one particular piece of graphic work in graphic design I want to do, and that's what I'm going to do. Or I'm an illustrator, and I like illustrating children's books. Perfectly good for me. I, I'm very happy that there are people in our business who are single-minded. Uh, some of the best work I know is done by people who are single-minded, but that ain't me. It hasn't been the studio, as you can see looking on the wall. We do all sorts of stuff, and um, we don't think any less or any more of ourselves for doing that. It's just the way we've been. When I teach and I find someone who rather shyly says to me, you know, um, I I like designing packaging and I like designing, you know, some of the things you were rather scornful about in your first things first. I say, fine, you know, don't, please don't, don't take all that to heart. All I was doing, I was speaking off the cuff there, I was, I was trying to launch a debate, a polemic, an argument, and when you do that, you, you overstate, you, know, you, you, you push it, you push the argument, that's what I was doing, so please, you know, carry on doing whatever it is you want to do. Oh yes. Because you see what you've done being used by children, by adults, by all sorts of people, in a way that most graphic design isn't. Most graphic design is taken in and then you get on with it. With a thing like a game, it's picked up again and again and again. And you have to be concerned about that. You have to be concerned about something that will stand the test not only of time but of repetition of people playing with it a lot. So what you're doing when you're doing a game is you're only supplying a kind of template really on which they do their thing. Because when people are playing games they're doing their thing. And they make a pattern, let's say if they're playing on the table or on the floor, which is unique. Each time you play a game it's unique. It never quite repeats itself. And I think that uh, there is something creative in playing a game. Well, I know there is. Come on, that's what, you know, every time you play a game of chess or drafts or whatever, connect, whatever, you are, you are creating something, an act, an act, the act of playing a game. So that is different. And I um, don't normally bang on about this, but you came here talking about the game, so I think it's worth exploring this one a little bit. 
the satisfaction that I have got, and those of us who've been involved in the studio with, with Design of Games, from seeing people over decades playing with them, is, the, the satisfaction is intense. More so than almost anything else I've ever done. And I think that is a difference.